Um, my name is Joe. I'm just going to be showing the website builder tool basically from start to finish, just to show how easy it is to create a site using the tool, um, how you can really get a good feel of what the product is like. Yeah, you can sell it better to your customers, really anyone who wants an online presence, quick and easy, um, with lots of room for customization, and then a lot of other uh, additional tools. Um, it's a great fit for all of them. So we'll get started with a brand new one here. Um, from the products page, when you click set up for the first time, it's going to take you through this onboarding process where the customer or anyone using this website builder tool would specify the category and then the site name that they want to use. So for us, let's say that uh, maybe my friends and I just opened up a brewery. I'm, I'm coming from Minneapolis, so uh, Minneapolis brewery, um, and I want to make a online presence for it. What I can start doing is I can start typing in a number of different keywords, such as beer. We've got a number of categories that are going to have unique images and sometimes unique layouts that can kind of help you get started on building the site right away without having to put all of the content in like that. Um, I'm going to just look for brewery instead. That's one of the results. On the left, we'll see that there's some images of uh, brewery related things, some hot flowers, some glasses, some flights, and then what you call your site. So for us, let's just say that this is Minneapolis Craft Brews, and we'll go ahead and click continue. So after that, um, you are taken to this editor, and this page here uh, is what your um, potential website builder customers will be seeing when they want to make edits to their site, what they're going to be using if they want to uh, change little settings. And it's designed to be incredibly easy to use and very similar in its functionality throughout the different menus. So right at the beginning, it's pointing to this uh, menu called theme. And if we click theme here, um, there are a few different themes that we can choose from that would apply a number of colors and layouts to the site. So you scroll through those, you can kind of see, let's say you like this one organic uh, menu for changing the color that would then apply to different parts of the site, as well as some options for fonts here. So the theme up here on the top, there's lots of options to choose from that apply kind of a color scheme and font settings and so on to the entire site. Um, but as for actually building the content of the site, you can scroll through it and on the left here, you'll see all of the content of the site as is, just as if you were looking at it on your own uh, device or laptop. And as Shannon mentioned, um, it's something around four, uh, actually 70% or so of uh, visitors to sites are gonna be looking at things on mobile. So one of the uh, great pushes for Go Central is that it was really designed to be as responsive as possible in a variety of environments. So we've got this site that uh, is prepared for us based on the brewery choice we have. If we wanted to just kind of see it in its own environment instead of with all the tools around it, we can click preview. And one of the great things that it'll show is an example of a mobile preview on the right. So here we've just got a nice little cell phone shot. Um, the overall layout is gonna be uh, almost exactly the same except with some movement of text and image so to make sure that everything is readable. But really the tool is designed to make sure that whatever person is using this tool to make their online presence, it's gonna look lovely on any device that uh, people are visiting their site. So for the actual editing of the site, it's a very intuitive interface. If there's something you wanna edit or something you wanna remove, you can hover your mouse or your cursor over that, and then there's gonna be tools on the right, to change it. So for us, let's say I wanna get rid of this phone number. Phone number up here is one that I don't wanna share online. I click there, the menu on the right shows options for that field as well as the other fields for this section. So that's the main way to kind of navigate through the site as you continue um, to add content and add sections and so on. Um, you can also edit all of this by going to, um, from the main menu here, there's the theme one that we covered earlier, then there's pages below that. That's gonna be where you're gonna be adding pages. There's a number of great tools for adding pages, more than just simply adding a new page. 
You can make it a drop down menu. So if people want to have a really robust site with lots of different pages and um, lots of content scattered through different pages, they can even make a drop down menu. They can link to an external website. Maybe they have something hosted elsewhere. Um, you can have it show up in the navigation bar at the top, have it show down in the footer at the very bottom. And for each page you're working on, it's going to show uh, each of the sections that have already been added. For us with this brewery, we've got a header at the top, an about us section, a little, um, oh, this is actually, this one is in development. Um, so this one is not yet available, but there are a number of awesome new sections that are going to be added to uh, the product because the teams are actively working on updates for that. Um, but uh, these sections here are put there based on our category choice and we can edit them to our heart's content, which I was showing earlier when you hover your mouse over, you can, um, let's say you want to change the contact us field. You've got options to change up stuff like the title, but also more, uh, in-depth stuff, like if someone sends you a message through your contact us form, what do you want the thank you message to be? So some room for customization there in terms of not just what your visitors see on the site, but also just uh, custom things like how are you greeting them if they're reaching out to you? So just to, to track back to here, for the actual sections, um, whenever you want to add additional content and you're working on a specific page, you can click add section and then you have a number of sections to choose from. So pretty much whatever it is you're hoping to add to the site, it should be able to be supported by the sections here. We have a huge number of them and uh, they can be used in any variety of ways. We've seen some really creative ways that these sections can be used. Um, and one of them that uh, definitely want to highlight is a, a newer one that can be a very powerful tool for a lot of people with uh, websites is a blog section. So amongst those sections there, we can choose blog. The blog section gets added in, as it says, we don't have any blog posts yet, but if we click start writing here, that takes us to uh, the blog manager. This is where we can start writing posts from right within uh, the website builder tool. Um, it's a very, fairly simple interface, but it, it allows you to add in images, it adds in divider lines, um, you can customize your text, you can add featured images, you can even add categories to posts. So it's a very nice, easy to use, powerful blog tool that then puts those posts directly into your site. Another great, uh, great fit for anyone with a online presence or a goal to have some sort of online presence and they want that site to be more live Having something like that can really make the site more fun to visit, have people more come visit more, and, and so on. So I'm gonna quick jump over to the dashboard here as well. Um, within Website Builder, there is gonna be this dashboard where additional tools are. This is where you'd be able to start managing your posts as well after you've started doing that. You can also always click back to edit site. This is also, you can see there's tools for SEO, search engine, op, um, search engine like visibility and search engine optimization. So number of tools from the dashboard can be found as well. But apart from blog, you can kind of scroll through. Um, if you're looking to see if certain customers might be able to use this more than others, there's a great number of sections that everyone can use from the basic ones, such as an about us page and stuff like that, to other ones such as blog. Uh, you can make a calendar for events. You can attach files. You can make completely custom HTML sections as well. So for folks who have a de uh, design idea and know HTML well enough to do so, you can definitely do that as well. So yes, as well as social, social media icons. And so this is kind of a slapdash look at some of the tools that Website Builder can do. But really what uh, it's designed to do is make a mobile responsive, lovely, consistent online presence with a number of tools that can manage your site. Um, 
You can add content to it, edit content to it, publish on the go, continue to make edits. You can always see what it looks like in mobile preview as well. And I should mention as well, besides the theme and pages, we have site settings. So another um, host of tools to be used from stuff to manage your domain, to more tools for search engine optimization, Google Analytics, um, the option to create backups for creating your site. Let's say you've got some design ideas and you want to go back. You're not sure if you're going to like them or not. You can do that as well. So yeah, just to review, um, for anyone that's going to be using this, uh, if they're not sure it's a right fit for them, you can definitely uh, guarantee that the interface is designed to be very consistent. If we're working on the header up here, there's going to be tools to kind of change some options for it. On the right, if we want to move down to our About Us section, very similar set of tools. So if you start getting used to certain sections of the site, you'll quickly get more used to it. And it's, uh, it's supposed to be very easy and uh, consistent in its design and use. But that pretty much covers uh, what we want to cover with the demo of the website builder here. So I'm gonna make sure I stop sharing my screen and can move on to the next person. But thanks everyone. Hello everybody, my name is Jonas. And uh, today I'm going to walk through our backup system for resellers. As you know, uh, and you saw, I saw in the slide before, uh, with website backups, we try to offer individuals online, whether businesses or not, a comprehensive solution to ensure that if anything goes wrong, they could reliably get back online. And uh, here we see the dashboard of our backups that your clients will see. First, uh, your customers will be especially pleased with that if clients buy these backups, they get free monitors for their website so they could be notified if their website gets infected or blacklisted. As you see here, the monitors, they add it automatically. We offer that for free as part of backup solution. Second, our system is professionally translated into 24 languages. So that gives opportunity to your customers, clients to use backup in their preferred language. For example, we see German and it's, uh, and goes in German. Uh, our backup system also is hosting agnostic. That means that customers, they don't need to have the website hosted with GoDaddy to get their sites backed up. It could be any hosting. Uh, also, if the website is hosting with GoDaddy, the panel hosted, uh, backups setup is really, really easy. We get all FTP credentials automatically, and we start backing their websites immediately. For others and who host elsewhere, they will need to fill their credentials themselves. I'm displaying it here. I have a website added here. So it's really, really simple. I just added username, I just added password, and click next. And our system is trying to detect the database automatically. And if website is using WordPress, Joomla, vBulletin, Magento, or Drupal, we'll start back a process immediately. Uh, and if we don't find the database, of course, we will ask for details on setup. So the backup process will take a while, depending on website size and the connection speed. So let's review the website that we have uh, with backups completed. Uh, as you see, we display uh, our websites in cards, or if customers, your customers have many websites backed up, they could like, you know, for easier to display them in list. Uh, so it's really, really simple to read. We have website name, we have when the next, backup is going to start. We have if database is backed up correctly, when was the last, what's the status of the last backup, when was it, what's the size of total space that backups is using, and of course you can get, get, go and see the settings as well. Let's click on the card and see how it goes. So, um, by clicking on card, you see the overview of the backup. So you see it's pretty straightforward, very, very easy. See website name on top, settings, space used, status of last backup, when the next backup is going to start. Uh, 
also, if customers need a backup right now, so for example, they're doing major update to the website and wants to be sure that they could restore the website to exactly the state that it is right now, so they could click backup now and we will start backup process immediately. Uh, that's real, real convenient. Uh, depending on website type, we have different options for backup frequency. So for example, if client has just a simple representative site uh, that has you know, updates really rarely, he could select like monthly backups and it's really, really enough. Uh, but for example, if he has the e-commerce website and you know, updates the data really, really frequently, uh, he could do the on, on daily basis. Uh, the other great feature that we have is backup start, start time. So for example, if customer has many websites backing up at the same server, he might want to get them balanced to balance the load and start the backups at different times. They could do that easily here. Uh, the other great feature for backup start time is like, for example, if there is a commerce company who finishes work like at 6 p.m. and uh, they want to back up everything that was done that day. So they could set up that I wanna run backups, for example, at seven and we will we'll back up all the work that was done on that day. Really, really nice feature. Um, we also have a couple of notification preferences. So for example, some clients, they prefer get backup status after every backup. Uh, but if you do daily backups and uh, successful every time, some clients can start ignoring them. So for those, we have the feature just to get notifications only on failures. And for others who check the dashboards frequently, they could just disable notifications and check the status on the dashboard as well. We make full backups. And as you saw in the slide before, our backup system is incremental. That means that on the first time, we need to backup all the website files. And after that, we identify the new and changed files and backup only those. And that's how we create full backup of that time and day. Uh, so below it, you see the list of, uh, let's go to the July better. So you see the list of the, uh, of the backups that were done. As you see, it's pretty straightforward date. What was the status? We also see uh, what files were added, what files were removed and modified, and also who wants to get a little more details, they could click on, um, backups details and see what exactly happened at that, on that day. We have, we store backups for 30 days. So when customer is in need to restore a site, he just simply scrolls down and see that, all right, so I wanna restore the backups for July 26. They click restore options. So we have two restore options available, files and database restore. If the website is completely broken, we usually recommend start with the files restore and then go with the database restore. And to do files restore is really, really easy. Uh, we have auto restore option. So you just click here and you can restore all files that your website has by clicking this. You just, we warned you that, hey, this is going to overwrite the existing files. So if you're okay with that. And once you agree, we start restoring that automatically. Uh, also, we have the selective restore option and it's really, really convenient. For example, if a client deleted just one image from the website and it doesn't make sense to restore all the files because it takes time and it overrides the existing files. So we have an option just to select just one file, confirm selected, and we will restore just that one single file without, without touching the others. Really, really convenient stuff, thing. And for others who prefer to do things manually, they prefer to get their files on their own computer, we also have options for them. They could download the files, they could download all, or similar with selective restore as well, select which files they want to uh, 
download and they will get this emailed or they could get the files directly by waiting here. With databases, it's really similar. Uh, on selected auto restore, customers select the database that they want to restore, confirm that they agree that current one will be all written, and they start a store process. And for clients who prefer to restore themselves as well, we have an option to do that themselves to get their website on their computer and to restore themselves. So that's about it. That covers pretty much about our backups. Thank you for your attention, and I'll answer questions.